In this 3D dimension session, I'll cover the basics from the dimension setup to using the dimensions both automatically and manually. Let's begin by looking at some of the dimension settings and defaults. In this sample project, I've opened up a saved camera view that already has many of the 3D dimensions. Let's begin by looking at the Edit Active View tool. For this saved camera view on the selected defaults, I'm using the dimension default for kitchens and baths. Let's take a further look at some of the settings that are specifically for 3D dimensions. On the general panel, toward the very bottom, is a category for 3D display. There are two specific settings. One is extend extensions to the mark. So I toggle that on and toggle that off. You can see the difference between the two options. Label faces camera, as you see the existing dimensions in here, as I rotate the camera, this will allow you to get the labels so they will then follow the camera and a little bit easier to see. One additional setting can be found on the textile panel. When you're using a custom textile, one of the options is to have a transparent background for your dimension. You may notice in this example I have a white background. If that were transparent, that would then fade into the background of the overall scene. On the Setup Automatic panel, there are a couple of settings for the exterior dimensions. Height above floor setting, in this case it's 10 inches, vertical labels. The same setting can be found for rooms. I'll show you how this works when we take those views here in just a minute. When you take a 3D view, you can set the default dimension settings for specific cameras. These settings can be established through the camera tool defaults for the various types of 3D views. When making changes in the settings, you can group select these cameras by holding down the shift key and then making the modifications. On the selected defaults panel, you can switch which dimension default you'll be using when you use that specific camera style. You'll have access to all of your dimension defaults in your template plan or in your current working plan. And then when you use that specific style, it will then be using those specific styles of dimensions. Let's take a look at using the dimensions in this sample plan. In a floor plan view, when I use the tool Automatic Exterior Dimensions, you're used to how the program will then place those dimensions. When I use the camera tool, and let's use the Perspective Floor Overview camera, let's kind of tip our view down and reorient around. Now when I get ready to place those exterior dimensions, Let's check the dimension defaults. Underneath the Edit Active View tool, let's come in and you can see that I'm using the quarter inch dimensions. In the previous floor plan view, I was using the floor plan dimensions. I'm going to use the exact same dimension defaults that we were using in the floor plan view. And then when I use the automatic exterior dimension tool, the dimensions should be very similar to the floor plan view that we had when we use the exterior dimensions. Now you can immediately see the dimensions are at the bottom portion of the view. A little bit earlier I had talked about the settings for these automatic dimensions and the location. Let's go back in and take a look at this underneath the dimensions and edit tool. Underneath setup automatic is the height above floor setting. If I modify that from 10 inches to 10 feet and then we re-dimension the structure using the automatic dimensions, you can see how they then shift up on the structure. So depending on where you want those dimensions is where that setting is controlling it. Let's go and take a look at one more setting in there underneath the Edit Active View. Immediately next to this height above floor is vertical labels. And let's take a look at what changes when I re-dimension the structure using the automatic dimension tool. You can see that the dimensions are now changed in orientation. As you peek at this a little bit closer, you can see that now they're a vertical style. So that's how those two settings affect the automatic exterior dimensions. When you place these dimensions, you of course can continue to edit them. Let's click on one of the dimensions here, and I'm going to pull it down near the bottom of the structure. I'm going to click on the next dimension string, and I'm going to pull this down. You'll see that I get a snap indicator. You see a little red snap indicator? 
that means that those dimensions are now aligned. So when you get those snap indicators, you click on the dimension, you see the red handle. I pull that down and I get the snap indicator. That will then show that those dimensions are aligned in the same plane. As you kind of change the view, you can see the extension is coming out in that same plane as we kind of slide the camera around a little bit more. And now those snaps allowed us to make sure that those are all parallel next to one another. Now that I've annotated by placing dimensions on the camera, when I go to close the camera view, the program is now going to prompt me if I want to save the camera. Much like your elevation views, if you've done elevations with annotations, text, or dimensions, it will also prompt you to save this. For this case, I'm going to say no. And let's take a look at using the perspective full overview camera. I'll rotate this view a little bit. I wanted to use the auto story pull dimensions. Let's take a look at the default settings for those dimensions. I want to make sure that it's configured as I want for the auto story pull. On the general panel, you can set it on the left or right. We'll use that. And then also what elevations it's going to pick up. I'm going to accept all those default settings. And then when I use the auto story pull dimension tools, we kind of slide over and you take a look at where those dimensions are placed. You can also see how they rotate with the label camera as I move that rough ceiling around, you can see how those are rotating in position. So the auto story pull tool will work based on the configurations. You can also edit these dimensions as you click on it, move it a little bit closer. You can pull the diamond off, pull that off into space. And you should also be able to click on the extra diamond next to my red selection handle, pull that up and set that where you want. And then, of course, you can edit those dimensions for the description as well by double clicking and opening up that dimension. Let's take a look at how some of the manual dimension tools work. Let's slide over so we can look at this outside wall. And I'm going to check the dimension default. I want to make sure that I actually change that. I'm going to use the kitchen and bath dimension default that are configured for kitchens and baths. When I use this tool, let's click on the dimension tool. The first thing you're going to see is in the lower left portion of my menu is a couple of settings. One is, as I hover over this, drawing on the object bounding box. I'll talk about that in a minute. The other setting next to that is drawing on the surface in a component mode. And then the next one is setting the offset. With the offset, this is how far away it will be from the drawing surface. I'll go ahead and set that to six inches so it's a little bit easier to see. And you can see with my cursor, the first thing that I need to do is establish the plane, which is the direction where the dimensions will be drawn. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on the wall to establish where that plane is. So you can kind of see that it's established the plane. And now when you use these tools, I'm in the manual dimension mode. Let's switch that to the end-to-end -end dimension mode, and we'll do it one more time. So I'm going to click on the wall, establish the dimension. Then I'm just going to kind of click and drag through the wall, and you can see where that dimension is drawn across the wall. Let's switch it one more time to the, to the manual dimension tool. Again, click to establish the plane. I'm going to move past the edge of the wall. I'm just going to come down here, and I'm going to click and drag the dimension and see what it picks up. Now as we take a look inside of the dimensions, it's obviously going through the wall and picking up a few of these items. Again, you can easily pull those dimensions off by clicking on them. And then if you want to add a dimension, notice how it didn't pick up the toilet fixture. I can then add the center line for the toilet fixture. And then the offset that I had set was 6 inches, and I established it based on the wall. And in this case, the dimension is actually underneath of the cabinet. So I might need to tip the view up just a little bit, and then click on the dimension, and then pull that out so the dimension is then visible on the outside of the cabinet. And that way you can easily identify where it is. Let's close this view and take one more view inside of the bathroom itself. So using the 3D camera view tool, let's click and drag towards the vanity. Let's check the dimension defaults that we have set up for this particular camera. And currently I'm using a kitchen and bath dimension defaults, specifically two set up, 
to locate the boxes for the cabinets. When I use the dimension tool, let's check the offset, make sure that that's set. Right now it's set to be 6 inches. And now I'll click to establish the plane. You can see the feedback on the cabinet itself, so I'll click to establish the plane. I'll move the cursor to the left past the first cabinet box. Then I'm going to click and drag to pick up just the cabinet boxes that it's set up to locate. And now you can see those dimensions are only locating the cabinet boxes. And I'll click and drag to pull those dimensions down. I'll pull on the red selection handle. Just pull those down a little bit. If I use the same dimension tool, let's go ahead and click and establish the plane. So I'm going to click on the front of this cabinet. I'm going to click and drag down through the cabinet, pick up the dimension. Let's pull that over here just a little bit, slide it over so you can see the dimension on the side of the cabinet. Use the extra diamond, pull that up so that it snaps onto the countertop. And then I can also do the same thing for the floor. Click on the dimension, click on the extra diamond, pull that down until it picks up the floor. So when using the 3D dimensions, it's important to establish the plane first. Let's look at dimensioning the countertop. So I click on the countertop, you'll see the upper portion of this is actually broken into two countertops, a left and a right. The upper edge is selected based on the red selection handle I have. There is a tool in the lower edit menu called Dimension the Selected Edge. And what that will do is it will add a dimension for that selected edge. So you can click on the countertop. You see how it's got the lower one. If I click on the upper one, I can use the tool Dimension Selected Edge. So that tool, you can click on several objects. If I kind of move the scene around a little bit and I click on the window and I use the same tool, you can see that it's picking up the dimension for the for the item and it actually picked up the dimension for windows for both the vertical and the horizontal dimension. There is no selected edge for these particular openings. So that's one difference with openings when you're using the automatic tool for the selected edge. So again, get the selected edge, you see the red selection handle, then using the tool for dimension selected edge, it will then position that dimension on the edge, makes the dimensioning process much easier. Let's close this 3D view, and in this case I'm not going to save the camera. Let's take one more overview camera view and take a look at using the dimension in a component mode versus an object mode. Let's kind of zoom in here, and let's just check our existing dimension default. Let's make sure that it's set up to be in kitchen and bath dimension mode. And then with the dimension tool, let's use the end-to-end -end dimension tool that I have selected. Currently, the dimension mode is on the bounding box. With toilets, there's quite a large bounding box. As I kind of hover over this, you can see the bounding box probably set up to be something like 30 inches. Now that I've clicked to establish that plane, and I click and drag a dimension through here, it dimensions the bounding box. Now if I switch the mode, let's go back into the end-to-end -end dimensions. I switch the mode and I go into a component mode. It'll be a little more difficult on the toilet because this is curved in every way. It's going to be a little bit easier to see component mode on something like the stairs. If I want to dimension the railing for the stairs, I want to know the dimension from the upper and lower portion in here. I'm going to switch my dimension default into the point-to-point -point dimensions. Using the point-to-point -point dimensions, using the mode to draw on a surface, now I can click to establish a surface. You see the side of the surface, maybe? And let's click on that. I've established a surface. I'm going to get the point on the end of the railing, and I'm going to click and drag until I get the point to the upper portion. The dimension is going to indicate that it's using these face edge points. And we'll go ahead and accept that and close it. And now I can actually get the dimension using the point-to-point -point dimension and following the slope of that plane, and you can see the dimension is about 73 or 78 and 3 quarters inch approximately. So this is a nice way to get that edge. You can use the same thing on the roof edge, of course. In this case, you can always click on the selected edge. You see the selected handle, and then you can use the dimension selected edge, and it will pick up those dimensions for the selected edge. 
One additional tool that's pretty nice, you can click on these dimensions and you can also rotate the dimension. So I rotate this around. You can see that it makes it a little bit more readable using the rotate handle. So there's quite a few ways you can use these dimensions to create annotated 3D views. Remember, when you go to close the camera, if you save this, let's go ahead and save it, go into the project browser, and then I can double click to recall the camera. You can continue your editing. In fact, one of the things that I omitted showing, if you click on this dimension, let's go ahead and add a dimension over to the casing. You can click on these objects and then click on the dimension and set an exact dimension for relocating those just as if you would in an elevation or in a floor plan view. Let's pull up the existing bathroom dimensions camera and I'll double click to open it up. Using 3D dimensions is a great way to communicate with the client as well as your subcontractors. I hope you enjoy using the 3D dimension tool and thanks for watching.